Welcome to the second section of our knitting kit class. In this we're going to talk about some of the things that you will need as you progress on as a knitter. It includes stitch markers, stitch holders, cable needles, needle gauges and row counters. And we're going to start with stitch markers. So I debated whether or not they belonged here or in the essentials kit. There are two different types. There are those that are ring markers and those that are locking stitch markers. Ring markers, either a solid ring or a flexible loop, where they don't open. So you can see here they come in different sizes, so you use these based on the needle size that you're using as well. You can use larger ones or smaller ones depending on what you prefer. As you can see they go on over the tip of the needle and they are frequently used between stitches to mark segments of your knitting, particularly in lace or cabling, or where you're going to take any action in the knitting that you need to remind yourself of. You can see there are a variety of different types of the ring marker category. The other type then are locking stitch markers. They're my favourite. These are called bulb pins. You'll frequently see them being used to attach labels to clothing, but it's also really useful in knitting because they're quite slim, they have an openable they have an opening and you can use them in very different parts of the knitting. You can use them to mark individual stitches, the fronts of work, you can use them for row counting. They're really useful and you can buy them in either very fancy boxes or in huge bags. There are other types of locking stitch marker as well. Many of them have different types of clasp and again it's all about being able to open and close them so that you can place them into the work as well as onto the needle if you wish. Another marker type which is in the locking stitch marker category is the split ring marker and what this does is that while it doesn't have a clasp it can still be inserted into the knitting. Inserted into the knitting by sliding the fabric or stitches between the gap in the circle. So you can see as well that these can also be used over the needle in the same way that the solid markers can be and over time they are the kind of thing that you will find in your hoover and absolutely on every surface of your home. In many patterns you'll be told that you will need to set aside your live stitches to work later. For these you need a stitch holder or waste yarn. In my case I actually use the cables from my interchangeable needle set for this purpose. You can also use waste yarn which won't bond with your knitting so something like a smooth cotton. Stitch holders come in a number of different varieties one of which looks like a very large safety pin although it is missing the little curve at the end so that the stitches don't get stuck in it. You can also use a safety pin itself if you have a small number of stitches, so for example the top of a shoulder, that you want to hold separate for a small period of time. As you progress as a knitter you may want to do cables and for these you need cable needles. So these cable needles have a curve through the middle and they're essentially a small double pointed needle. They can either be flat or curved as you see here. They are used to hold these extra stitches to the back or the front of the work as you do your cable. The curve in these ones means that it is slightly more difficult for the needle to fall out of the work as you're doing your cable. A tool that you wouldn't need in an ideal world, but needs must, a needle gauge. So what happens with needles sometimes over time is that the size marking on them wears off. And in order to know what size your needles are, you're going to need a needle gauge. So this needle gauge has a marking for metric and for US sizes. You can see that you try to slip your needle in and if there's too much wriggle room you go to the next small one and it goes through and it should fit just right. And if it's too small it won't go through. This is a really useful tool to have in your knitting kit. So this is a tool that you won't see mentioned on any of the patterns but it might be something that you find useful. It is a row counter. There is a lot of counting in knitting, so sometimes it is useful to have something to check off as you go. They come in a number of different formats, so some of them are manual where you do a little bit of twisting and this one is where you just press a little button. You can also download a number of apps which do the same thing now. I use a piece of paper and stitch markers to count where I am rather than a row counter, but if you find this useful it is a very handy tool to have in your kit. Another knitting kit staple, and something else for your hoover, are T-pins and pins. So T-pins are used predominantly for blocking, and pins are used for all sorts of things. So I use my pins for marking where I am when I'm measuring a swatch, I use them for blocking as well, and I also use them for holding my seams together when I'm seaming. 
You can see here where you can just slide it in between the stitches to mark where you are in a piece of knitting. I recommend buying rust proof ones in the same way that I do for T-pins because if you're going to use them for blocking at any point you don't want them to rust into your knitting. Here you'll see the T-pins being used and again you can use all sorts of different T-pins or you can actually buy them at lovely heads as well and they're very pretty and decorative. Also an interesting fact is that you can buy them as wig pins and they are less expensive when you buy them as that than when you buy them as T-pins for knitting. And that brings us to the end of our progressing on section of the knitting kit course. Next we'll look at some tools where you might not need them, but they're definitely lovely to have.